It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, a presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? Larry Lasseur from the CBS News staff and Lewis Banks, associate editor of Time magazine. Our distinguished guest for this evening is Leonard W. Hall, chairman of the Republican National Committee. You know, heading a national political committee is something like being a general. You pick the right men for the jobs, you make the plans, and then you take in supplies in the form of money. Well, then comes D-Day, or Election Day in this case, and your men are on their own, and all you can do is sit back and wait. Well, Mr. Hall, you're battling tradition this time, too. The tradition that two years after a major presidential election, the opposition party always takes a few seats in Congress. What do you think are your prospects of winning that battle? Well, we're going to win it, Larry. We're going to win it because I think we have a similar situation to the one in 1934. We have uh, a very popular president. Uh, we have a president who presented a very popular program to the Congress. Uh, a great percentage of that program has been enacted. And for that reason, I think we're going to have uh, another 1934. 1954 is going to see an increase of Republican votes in both houses of Congress. Well, the Democratic uh, national chairman was on this program only last week, and he thought that uh, enthusiasm about the election was pretty spotty around the country. Do you feel the same way about it? I would have said uh, yes uh, two or three weeks ago, but I think, Larry, by reading the papers and by talking with people, uh, you'll find that the enthusiasm has grown in the last 10 days, and I think the reason for it is this. Uh, Mr. Eisenhower made a speech in the Hollywood Bowl, you remember. He made another one in Denver. Uh, he made another one the, uh, last night in Washington. He's been on a trip today, and I think that sparked the whole campaign as far as we're concerned. Mr. Hall, on this trip of his, the president uh, reminded the voters that the red herring was the way the last administration characterized communism in government. Now, does this mean that you're bearing down on the issue of internal communism in these last days of the campaign? It will be one of the issues. Uh, we have had uh, surveys made, uh, and uh, those surveys indicate that communism is still a great issue in the United States, yes. What are the other issues that you've, your surveys show you are important at the last minute? Well, I think the overall, the overriding issue is the Eisenhower program, and that includes, in it, of course, uh, cutting costs of government, uh, tax reductions, uh, a great security program, eliminating subversion of government, and so on. Well, uh, Mr. Hall, if I may say so, your opponents have claimed that uh, the president's desire to campaign on his administration's record has been crossed up by Vice President Nixon, who has desired to campaign on the issue of communism in past governments. Now, do you agree about that? Well, uh, I think uh, if you read the papers uh, uh, just this morning, the president uh, uh, wrote to Mr. Nixon and congratulated him upon the hard work he's doing in this campaign. So I don't think there's any crossing up at all. I think Mr. Nixon's doing a yeoman's job in getting around the country and uh, vice, uh, as vice president and as president, of course, no one could ask more than the president has done in the last few weeks. Mr. Hall, they're doing the long McCarthy army hearings. I think you decided publicly that Senator McCarthy wouldn't be much of an asset to you in this campaign. Now Senator McCarthy has made a, a statement to the papers in which he urges all Republicans to unite and elect a Republican Congress with one notable exception, and that's in New Jersey. Now, in the light of his new statement, would you favor financing a campaign trip for him in these last days of the campaign? We have nothing like that uh, on the books. Do you think he's hurt? His one exception was uh, Mr. Case in New Jersey, whom he said he wouldn't endorse. Do you think he's hurt uh, Case's battle for the Senate? I'm going to answer that by saying we're solidly behind uh, Mr. Case, and uh, we are supporting all candidates who are behind the Eisenhower program. Mr. Case is the duly nominated candidate in Jersey. He has said he will support the Eisenhower program, and we're doing everything we can to elect him. I'd like to ask you a hypothetical question, uh, Mr. Hall. If you were to lose in New Jersey <coughs> and uh, Massachusetts and New York, <coughs> would that mean that control of the Republican Party would go back to the Midwestern uh, wing of the party, which has been anti-Eisenhower? 
Well, I, I think you're wrong in your premise that any part of the country has been anti-Eisenhower. Uh, surveys indicate that he's popular in every state in the Union, and I can't go along with the other premises because I don't like that if we lose them. We're not going to lose them. Well, suppose we put it this way. If uh, certain uh, senators were to win, like uh, Case in New Jersey and Burke in Ohio, although he's a Democrat, and uh, Douglas in Illinois, other liberal senators, would this mean that Eisenhower would be stronger in 1956? Well, uh, I certainly can't go along with any premise which would make Mr. Eisenhower stronger if any Democrat were elected this time. The president himself has stated definitely he wants a Republican Congress. And uh, uh, irrespective of the outcome, it's indicated that the president is still very, very popular and uh, nothing has happened to uh, affect that popularity. Well, Mr. Hall, there's some suspicion among Was Washington correspondents <coughs> that uh, certain right-wing elements of the Republican Party would gladly even endure defeat of some candidates, particularly Mr. Case, in order to strengthen their own hold on the party. Do you feel an internal struggle in the party that's this desperate? Well, uh, there's no internal struggle at all, and uh, the best way, as Al Smith uh, used to say, is look at the record. And when the chips were down in the Congress, I don't believe we have another period in history where a party stuck together as our party did on the essential elements of the Eisenhower program. On the main issues, they voted right down the line. And that's the test. Well, I wonder if you would agree that a uh, Democratic Congress would stand up and support uh, President Eisenhower if they took control in the congressional elections. Well, uh, in the last Congress, uh, Republicans supported the president about 80% of the time. Uh, Democrats supported him on the average about 40% of the time. I think that answers your question. In order uh, to take another approach to this, suppose a, there would be a Republican landslide in Congress. Do you think that President Eisenhower would have an enormous strength in Congress, perhaps the most enormous hold or the, the strongest hold that any president's had in the history of the Republic? Because I they've all campaigned, he's helped them win. Well, I think his victory in 1952 indicated he's one of the strongest men we've ever had in public life. And, of course, anything that would go along that same line would uh, make that strength larger, but it's, it's pretty difficult for me to see him any stronger than he is today because he's a very strong person, a very great man in the United States, and very popular with the people. Well, Mr. Hall, you're, you said before that your figures seem to indicate that you've come up in the last 10 days. And why do you account for that? What's been your strongest issue, do you think? I think the, uh, the one big thing that accounts for it is the fact that the president has uh, been making these television broadcasts to the people and laying the issues flatly on the line as to what it would mean to him if a Democrat Congress were elected. I believe the people still have great faith in the president and because of his activity uh, uh, we have seen a resurgence, a spark uh, in the whole campaign. Republicans are alive uh, all over the country and the independents and, and Democrats who voted for Mr. Eisenhower in 1952 are again carrying on their campaign to elect Republican candidates for both houses who will support Mr. Eisenhower. Well, Mr. Hall, nevertheless, Mr. Eisenhower is not on the ticket and there has been a trend, uh, I think we'll all have to admit, for the Democrats previous to this last week. Now, what do you think your weakest issue has been? I don't, uh, it's hard to say what is your weakest issue. I think uh, it, 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 we can't answer it in that way. We had an apathy of voters. Uh, that apathy in part was caused by the fact that many people who voted for Mr. Eisenhower were well satisfied with what has happened down there and thought they could sit back and it would continue without them participating this fall. Uh, I wouldn't say we had uh, a weak issue. I, I, I would hard to hardly know what to point at. Well, don't you, you think that foreign like policy that? may have been a, uh, a weaker issue? Actually, the administration has been accused by its opponents of conducting its foreign policy on the basis of sloganeering, of, of uh, massive retaliation, of new looks at this and that. Now, do you think that's a fair accusation? Well, uh, when you look at the situation as it was when we took over and look at the world today, uh, it's quite a different picture. Uh, Iran settled, Suez settled, Guatemala settled, uh, the situation in Europe settled, the war in Korea over. Uh, we'll go to the people on the record so far as foreign policy is concerned, and that has not been something that happened in the last few days. It has been a gradual situation 
created by the fact that at last we've got firm leadership so far as foreign policy is concerned in the White House. Do you worry a little about the farm boat, Mr. Hall? Reports, no. For instance, I talk with people all over the country, and uh, I have no worry about that at all. Number one, I think the farmers know that, uh, uh, if no one else knows, that we are still working under this uh, law that was passed by a Democrat Congress. And uh, if there are low prices in certain areas, well, it, uh, the law that, uh, uh, if it has anything to do with it, the law was passed by a Democrat Congress. The laws that Mr. Eisenhower asked for and were passed have not gone into operation yet. Mr. Hall, there's an old political tradition that uh, people don't vote for somebody, they vote against someone. Now, if you agree with that, uh, could you tell us what you think the people are going to vote against this time? Well, uh, first, I think there's a great affirmative vote this year because of confidence in the president and his program. Secondly, uh, however, I think there's, uh, there may be a vote against because I do not believe that our people want to go back to Trumanism. I, uh, 34 million people decided in 1952 they wanted no more of that. And I believe they still have that on their minds and they will indicate it by their vote next Tuesday. Well, do you think that, this, that the elections are going to be a horse race or are they going to be a sweep for one side or the other? I have said that uh, my feeling is that we would have the Senate by at least two seats and the House by at least 15 seats. I would call that a pretty close election. I see. Well, thank you very much for taking yeah. out this time, Mr. Hall, and coming up here and talking to us. Good to be with you. The opinions expressed on the Longines Chronoscope were those of the speakers. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Larry Lesseur and Louis Banks. Our distinguished guest was Leonard W. Hall, Chairman of the Republican National Committee. The old words accuracy and reliability take on a new and a true meaning when applied to a Longines watch. Because one knows where one stands with time all the time, a Longines watch brings you priceless peace of mind. Now for almost a century, Longines has made watches which by observatory measurements have consistently been equal to or superior to the highest achievements of each decade. Further proof is found in this fact. Among the finest watches of the world, only Longines watches have been honored with 10 World's Fair Grand Prizes and 28 gold medals. Yet, though Longines is one of the finest of all watches, there are many beautiful models for both ladies and gentlemen for as little as 7150. Whatever the type, whatever the style, Longines has made it for you. So when next you buy a watch for yourself, or perhaps as a Christmas gift, to someone near and dear to you, remember these facts about Longines watches. And remember too, that throughout the world, millions of men and women agree that the satisfaction which comes from owning a Longines watch is above and beyond price. Longines, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored Christmas gift, premier product of the Longines Whitnall Watch Company, since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. At Longines Whitnor Jewelers, see Atmos, the perpetual motion clock created by Le Coultre. Atmos runs without winding, without electricity, powered only by variations in the temperature of the atmosphere. Atmos, product of Le Coultre, division of Longines Whitnor.